All right, welcome back. So today we are going to be talking about IP addresses. So we're going to start at the very basics of IP addresses. We're not going to get into how to subnet right now. Uh, right now we are just focusing on what is an IP address and how is it structured. So to start off, uh, IP addresses are divided up into four octets. That's what we call the groups of numbers. So if you ever look at an IP address and it says 192.168.2.253 or whatever, whatever it says, each of those groups, the 192 dot, that group is actually an octet. So why is it called an octet? Well, that means it's got eight digits in it to make that number. Obviously, 192 is not eight digits. So that means that that octet is actually eight digits in binary. So now we get to do the fun part and figure out what is binary and how does it change into a, a number that's legible to us. Okay, so right here I've got the IP address written out and I got a little note up top just to remind you what an octet is, is a group of eight. So to break this down, let's figure out how we get 192 out of eight different numbers. So focusing on just 192 right here, I'm gonna write out this form that you can use to convert by hand binary into decimal format. So we're gonna start over on the right side over here and go left contrary to what we normally do in the English language. So we're gonna start with a one and then we're gonna double every time we go down all the way until we get to eight digits. So one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, and 128. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So with binary, since it's all just ones and zeros, one means yes, it applies, zero means no, it does not apply. So each of those binary digits has a place that it correlates to, a value it correlates to. So here, let's say we have a one under the one section, that means one applies, so that value is one. If there's a zero under the two section, that means two does not apply, so there's not two in that, uh, in that function right there. So if I were to do, let's say, one, zero, 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 one, one, zero, one. All right, so we got a one, two, eight. We have an eight, a four, and a one. We just ignore all the ones that have zeros in them. So that's one, two, eight plus eight equals, that's six, carry the one, that's three, 136 plus four, that's 140 plus one equals 141. So this number right here, the 1000 zero, 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 one, one, zero, one equals 141. So to go over this again, let's erase this real quick. So remember, if you have an octet, each of these binary numbers has a value associated with it. Going from the right to the left, from least to greatest, and they double every time. So starting at one, then it doubles and goes to two, doubles and goes to four, doubles and goes to eight, so on, so on, so on. So that way you can tell if, uh, if you're trying to get to, let's say 192, let's figure out what that value is gonna be. So I'll erase all these down here. So we're gonna try to figure out which of these digits needs to be activated and which ones of these needs to be deactivated in order to equal 192. So to, to find a number using binary that's already given to you, uh, you need to start on the left side and go to the right, filling in the numbers. So since you've already written out the numbers, you got 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. To fill in the numbers, you're going to start activating them from the left and going to the right. So 128 will definitely go into 192, so we'll go ahead and activate that one with a 1, because 1 means yes, it applies, means on, 0 means off, or no, it does not apply. So we already got 128 going towards that. So now 64, will 64 go into that? Actually, yeah, 64 plus 128 equals 192 exactly. So we just hit a one there and then none of the others need to apply. So we just put a zero underneath all of those. So the binary digit of, or binary number of 192 is one, one, zero, 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 zero. Let's see, is that enough? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yep. That right there is 192 in binary. So let's, let's go over to 253, because that's kind of an oddball number. It's not one of the standard computer language numbers that, that uh, double. 
or increase by a certain amount every time. So let's see, 253. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and erase all this so we can just have a clean slate and not get distracted by anything previous. So 128 definitely goes into 253. Yes. And if we add this, that's we already know that's 192. So we'll go ahead and add a 64 to it as well. So then if we add a 32, that equals 224. So we'll go ahead and do that because we're still underneath 253. Now, if we were to add a 16 to that, that comes up to 240. So go ahead and do that and then 248 over here. And we're at 248. Let's see. Let me pull out my calculator real quick because I'm horrible at regular everyday math. So we're at 248 plus 4 equals 252. So we'll go ahead and activate that one as well. Now we're at 252. We're only one away. So that means we're going to skip this number 2 and we're going to say yes to this number 1. So here's the number for 253 in binary. It's 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. That right there to a computer means 253. So when we are figuring out IP addresses, it's going to be a bunch of ones and zeros when you have to do it in binary. Newsflash though, when you get into the real world, you're not going to be doing this. You're going to have an app on your phone. Uh, contrary to what the teachers might say, you will always have a calculator available to you when you're doing this. So uh, don't fret that when you're in the real world, you're not going to have to pull out a sheet of paper and calculate binary and all this kind of stuff. But it is extremely important to know the concepts of it because that can come in really handy when you're troubleshooting really weird issues and you're trying to figure out what is going on or, uh, or how something is structured in your network. So we're going to erase this real quick and we are just going to figure out what 192.168.2.253 is in binary. So we already know that 192 is... 1, 1, and then six zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that equals eight total digits right there. So we're going to put a dot there. Now 168. So that's 128 applies. Yes. Let's see, 128 plus, let's see what plus 32 equals. That's 160. So that's too much if we put a 64 there. We're going to put a 32 there. So that comes out to 160. Well, now we just need eight and we'll hit it. So that's a zero for the 16, and then a yes for the eight, and then a no for everything else. So now we've got one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero, zero. And that right there equals 168. So we got that done. Now we're going to do two. That's going to be super easy. So dot, let me erase all this. All right, so the, the two, it, it's going to be super easy. Just zero under everything. Since we have a two right here, we just put a one under the two and then a zero for everything else. So that is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six zeros, a one, and a zero. So that's number two. And then right here, two, five, three. I can't remember what we figured out it was. I think it was something along the lines of everything but the last couple. So we're going to figure it out again. That's a one, 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 one. So that's one, two, eight, one, two, eight plus 64 plus 32 plus 16. We're at 240 now. It's plus eight, that's 248. Plus four, we're at 252. So we're going to go ahead and activate those two. 252, that means a zero right there and just a one right there completes it. Now we're at 253. So one, 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 zero, one. And you're going to get sick of ones and zeros by the time you're done with this. That's just how it is. Okay, so now we've got an entire IP address right here. That is what a computer sees when you type in an IP address or when your computer claims an IP address or is given an IP address. This is what the computer actually sees. It has to do extra work to translate it into regular numbers that we can see. Um, but don't feel too bad for it because it's not very difficult. All right, so subnet masks. What is a subnet mask now? So I'm gonna erase this up here. Now that we've got our IP address here, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what a subnet mask is. And I'm gonna keep the binary down here from our previous IP address because it'll be important in a second. So a subnet mask will look like something like this. 255.255.255.0. This is a pretty typical IP uh, subnet mask that will be in your home network. If you were to uh, open up a command prompt and type in ipconfig, 
on your computer, I bet you it'll come up with something like 192.168.1.11 is your IP address. And then the subnet mask is going to be 255.255.255.0. All right, so we're going to go ahead and figure out what a subnet mask is in binary because that's going to be important. So let's go ahead and draw a line here to make sure our binary doesn't get blurred, but it will come in handy in a minute. So 255, just to save you the trouble, is all the digits activated. So we're just going to put a 1 under everything, and that equals 255. So since this octet right here is 255, we're going to bring that binary down to here. So we'll go ahead and put 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And spoiler alert, the next two are going to be identical. So 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Now let's figure out what 0 is. Oh, that's easy. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Right there. OK, so on top we have the IP address of, what was it, 192.168.2.253. And then on the bottom, we have the subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. Now we are going to use a technique called anding. And. This is very important. So and basically means you have two digits. Uh, let's just say it, it applies to binary. So you've got two binary digits. They both have to be the same in order for it to carry down or in order for it to activate. So what, what does that mean? Uh, let's, let's just go ahead and show you. Right here, both of these, oops, both of these are ones. So that means that underneath it, it will still be a one. Right here, we've got a one and a zero. Both of those are not identical. And so that means it is going to be off. It's not going to apply. So for an and operation, both have to be identical let me let me rephrase that. Both have to be ones in order for it to activate underneath in the new equation. So all of these are going to be zeros because, see, only one of them applies. So right here we've got two that activate, and then one, two, three, four, five, six that do not. Now we've got one that activates, two that activate, three that activate. So we've got one and a zero and a one and a zero and a one and a zero, zero, zero. Now here in this third octet right here, we've got only one that activates. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six zeros. Then ugh, my hands are all wobbly. This right here is going to activate, so we'll put a 1 there, and then a 0 for the other one, because they're not identical. And then, this last one, none of them activate, so it's going to be nothing but zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 zeros. Okay, so what did we just create? What was the purpose of anding? Well, the purpose of that is so we can figure out what the network address is of the IP address given. Network address means the very first address in your subnet or your sub network. So in subnetting, the entire point of it is to take a massive network and whittle it down to a much smaller, more manageable network for security reasons, for um, the memory in your router and, and routing tables and all that kind of stuff, which you'll get to later in whatever courses you're taking. Network address basically just says, hey, this is the first address in your little bitty block of addresses known as your subnet. And the subnet is based off of, is a combination of your subnet mask and your IP address. So this god-awful number right here that we just created is the network address. So let's figure out what it is. I'm going to actually erase all of this junk because I don't want to see it anymore. Oh, gosh, this is taking a lot longer than I thought it would. All right, let's raise that real quick. Okay. We're going to figure out what these numbers are. So we got a 1 and a 1. It's a 1 and a 1. 
and the rest of them are zeros. Okay, cool. Well, we already know from the previous uh, previous one we did of this that equals 192. So cool. Next one, the next octet down here. So we've already got that one done. We'll just scribble it out so we don't have to look at it anymore. All right, now we've got a one and a zero, and a one and a zero, and a one and then three more zeros. What does that equal? That's 128 plus 32. Let me get my handy dandy calculator because I'm horrible at basic addition and subtraction. So that's 128 plus 32. That equals 160. So then plus eight, that's 168 plus nothing else. Okay, so that's 168. All right, so now that we got 192 and 168 in here as our network address, let's scribble that out so we don't have to look at that one either. Now we've got a bunch of zeros and a one somewhere in there, so we're going to figure out what that is. The one is going to be on this two right here, and so we can just put in zeros for everything else. And that means it's just gonna be two. 192.168.2. something. All right, scribble that one out, and now we just got a bunch of zeros. So that's gonna be a zero. So there's your network address. This is the beginning of your subnet. It's 192.168.2.0 for an original IP address that was 192.168.2.253.